what's good y'all it's your boy ross back here again with another video so we're gonna check out the moment wwe ruined nxt now i've been seeing a few things online regarding nxt and the latest like recent purge as you can pretty much say of their roster to the point where people have pretty much claimed nxt is pretty much done for at this point they've let go so many people um i'm not sure why i i don't know what's going on with wwe but it's like this past year there's been so many releases of of talent and now they're hitting nxt pretty hard and i don't know what the future of nxt holds like it's not that many if you're cutting half your roster or or, or a good percentage of it what's left so we're gonna check this out see what's going on here man appreciate all the love and support road to 60k and let's do this last friday wwe unfortunately released 13 nxc stars whoa, whoa, and it whoa, whoa. shocked many bobby fish bronson reed mercedes martinez tyler russ kona reeves leon ruff stefan smith jake atlas ari stern sterling desmond troy zachariah smith asher hale giant zendir zendir Bro, that's a lot of people. Granted, some of these people I don't really know like too well, but that's still that's a that's a decent amount of people, bro. Like, goddamn wrestling fans across the world shortly after that it was reported that nxc was going to experience some drastic changes to the presentation and the talents we haven't seen the production changes yet but vince mcmahon wants the brand to focus on taller and bigger wrestlers that are the basic feeling is they lost the war this is the aftermath and this is the new direction is younger guys and bigger guys wow damn Jeez, bro. Under 30 years old who have more charisma. Whether you believe this is for the better or not, I think we can all admit it and say that NXC needed to blow it up. The brand has not felt the same for quite some time now, and I thought that the show's been dead for over a year now. It's uninteresting, and I don't really care about many of the characters on the show right now. I believe this is a much needed transformation. They are also looking to sign talent that could become huge charismatic stars on the main roster. And I think the days of work rate wrestlers are gone. That I'll say this. I'm going to have to disagree with him. I don't think it's been dead. It, it's, it hasn't been the best, of course, but I don't think it's been dead. I, I honestly think that um, there's still been some, some pretty entertaining stuff on the NXT brand. Far more entertaining than Raw. Most of most of y'all can agree with me. What's been shown on NXT is still leagues better than what's been shown on Raw for months now. So I'm gonna have to disagree with him on that one. That is probably for the better in my opinion because at the end of the day, wrestling is about the story and the characters and NXT lost focus of that and they desperately needed this. And all of this begs the question, what ruined NXT? Well, in today's video, we're going to take a look at the exact moment when I believe NXT was ruined. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. Reality show. For those of you who forgot, NXT originally started off as a reality this show. True. WWE hired a handful of talent that wanted to be wrestlers and would make them compete in some of the most bizarre challenges, mini games, and yeah. promo battles. Yeah. This format of NXT would only last a couple of years mm -hmm. for a total of five that. seasons, and it's honestly easy to distinguish this as the worst version of NXT. Although some great wrestlers did come out of this time from NXT, I don't think it was a big success. WWE realized it as well and decided to have a complete overhaul of NXT. Facts, man. Yeah, who remembers NXT in its inception? That shit was, no. It was not, it was not where it is now. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was kind of cringe and I didn't really care too much about it. 2012 is when we would see that totally different version of NXT. Triple H and Dusty Rhodes took over the brand and made it their mission to create the stars of tomorrow. And this was a really special time for NXT because they actually succeeded. Yep. WWE had an incredible pool of talent. Names like Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, Big E, 
Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, and Jason Jordan were a part of the brand in 2012. And as you can clearly see, it was stacked. In 2013, new names surfaced on the brand as well as the previous wrestlers were now called up to the main roster. And this is when Sami Zayn, Tyson Kidd, Neville, Xavier Woods, and others showed up to entertain some fans while preparing themselves for either Raw or SmackDown. 2014 saw the debut of Kevin Owens and Finn Balor. On top of that, this was also the beginning of the women's revolution. The four horsewomen began to yep. take women's wrestling serious again, and Sasha Banks. And that, that was a good time, man. Women's rev, uh, wrestling started to really become main event, must-see television. Who remembers... I forgot which NXT takeover it is. Y'all comment down below. Let me know if you remember. Um, but it was the takeover between Sasha and Bailey. And this is when Bailey actually gained the championship. I thought that storyline was beautiful. The, the the setup was great, man. And I it was one easily. I say easily. Easily, it was the best match of the night. It wasn't even the main event. It was easily the best match of the night. People were talking about that match the entire that entire year as one of the best matches of all time. Well, one of the best matches of that year. So comment down below. Let me know if you guys remember which NXT TakeOver it was. I want to say it was TakeOver Brooklyn 1, but I could be wrong here. But either way, they were focusing on women's wrestling, and it was dope. Women's wrestling was getting out of the stigma of being bathroom breaks and more of like, hey, we need to watch this. This is going to be good. Banks, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, and Bayley were all getting ready to take over the main roster and change the complete game for the women. The beautiful thing about this era of NXT was that these wrestlers embraced their short time on the brand because they were hungry to get to the big stage of either Raw or SmackDown. Many of these superstars also credit Dusty Rhodes for their success. He was such a huge piece of NXT at this time. Unfortunately though, this era came to an end when Dusty passed away. Mm. Changes were made and the brand shifted to a new direction. Rest in peace, Dusty, man. After 2015, the new direction that NXT took was signing a ton of international stars mm -hmm. that made a big name for themselves outside of the WWE, and Shinsuke Nakamura was easily the biggest name that came from New Japan. That changed everything for NXT. It was a huge signing. Then you also had Samoa Joe, who was a top star in NXT at this time, yep. and Bobby Roode would eventually also sign with NXT and later become the NXT World Champion. These were three NXT champions from 2016 through 2017. I call it the old era because a lot of these guys were a bit older than what we expected in NXT in the prior years. Each of them were in their mid-30s at the time. It was an interesting change because the entire point of NXT was to create fresh and young stars, but things were a bit different here. Triple H's approach at this time was signing veterans and keeping them for a bit before sending them to the main roster. It was a bit strange, but I thought it was a fun time. And we also saw the rise of Bayley and also had some classic tag team matches with Fantastic DIY matches, and The man. Revival. This is just bringing me just nostalgia feels, man. And the thing about this is all these NXT champions, they worked in NXT. When they got to the main roster, it's like they couldn't continue the booking. They just, a lot of the time, they dropped the booking. They dropped the ball on booking these guys to be main event players. They obviously had main event appeal, but when it came to the main roster, it's just, it's like they switched up everything. They switched, they pretty much killed their momentum. Undisputed Era, man, one of the greatest factions. And now we head over to the Undisputed Era. This is obviously named after the Undisputed Era because I like to believe that they were always the major focus of NXT around this time, despite not necessarily being in the main event title picture. They were always in important feuds from 2017 through 2020, and they pretty much main evented war games almost every year. Yep. In my opinion, this was one of the strongest times in NXT because the talent was unbelievable. Yes. You had guys like Adam Cole, the Velveteen Dream, before he found out that he was a creep, <laughs> EC3, Ricochet, yep. Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, Aleister Black, and Pete Dunne. 
Each week, these guys would give us some of the most entertaining matches and the programs and the storylines were good as well. They weren't anything over the top, but it was interesting nonetheless. Yeah. The TakeOver pay-per-views were so good that it was hard for the main roster to even compete with them. Yep, TakeOver was everyone's highlight for whatever pay-per-view event that was happening that weekend. Takeovers were literally taking over the entire weekend. It wasn't just for that one night. People were excited about what was going to happen on Saturday more than what was going to happen on that Sunday night. And this is the, pretty much the same here, man. NXT, they held it down. I watched every single takeover around this time. I think I started watching the takeovers maybe like around 2017. I want to say like 2017, I started watching them and I've been hooked ever since because they were so, it was a breath of fresh air. The crowd was always lively, energetic. The matches was good. I didn't know who was who, but I started getting familiar with different wrestlers. It was entertaining, bro. It was just something different. I didn't have to worry about hokey bullshit, hokey cringe type material like you would get on the main roster. You know, I was getting actually good storytelling in ring wrestling. Like, I, I was enjoying it. I loved I almost it. every second of this NXT era. However, there were problems that began to arise. The wrestling matches were getting a bit too long and each of them kind of felt the same. You didn't have a different story that was being told throughout the night. The actual talent also refused to get called up to the main roster and they preferred to be at NXT even though they made less money with the brand. Rather than having fresh faces every few months, we were stuck with a majority of these wrestlers for a couple of years. This was slowly the beginning of the downfall of NXT. However, most of these problems weren't exposed yet because it was still an hour long show on the WWE Network. The moment WWE ruined NXT, I think. Unfortunately, these about. problems began to become more clear once NXT went from a one hour program on the WWE Network mm -hmm. to a two hour show on USA Network to compete with AEW. That was their downfall, right there. They were trying to compete with AEW when they should not have been trying to compete with AEW. They should have just been, stay true to themselves, stay one hour. You're trying to compete with another brand that happens to be premiering on the same night as you. That's that. That's where things went wrong. W. NXT was ruined the minute they tried to focus on outperforming AEW. The imaginary Wednesday night war is the worst thing that ever happened to NXT. Yep. This is when things only got worse. The show was constantly trying to counter program AEW rather than focusing on their own storylines. They did yep. not have enough talent to keep things fresh and entertaining for two hours. And then Vince McMahon began to get more and more control of NXT in hopes of taking away the ratings from AEW. The USA Network also had influence on the show as well, so it seems like Triple H lost a lot of freedom yep. and control. And let me make this very clear, NXT was still kind of good in the beginning of this time, however, it was not sustainable and therefore it did not last long. The bridge was slowly burning and it started because of AEW and trying to compete with that promotion. Things got even worse once the pandemic started. Mm -hmm. NXT really took an even bigger hit because of that. The quality of the show dropped immensely and it never recovered. Hopefully, Vince McMahon does save it and these new changes are promising, but until then, I will say that NXT is ruined. Anyways, that is it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I agree with him on why it got ruined. Once once NXT went to two hours, it, yeah, it, it messed them up because they were trying to compete. That's pretty much what it was. They were trying to compete with w uh with uh aew instead of just staying true to themselves staying true to what got them to the place they are at now you know what i'm saying and honestly it, it sucks because once vince mcmahon is his mindset is on is like his mindset is set on something that's just what it's gonna be and not even Triple H can supersede that. So it's just one of those things where once Vince McMahon started taking control over it because he wanted to, you know, go head to head with AEW, it was wraps. It was it was done. So 
it's not as good as it once was but it's still better than fucking monday night raw and you cannot change my mind on that so comment down below let me know do you guys feel like nxt is done for after these recent releases like do you guys think nxt can't be salvaged or do you guys still have hope that nxt will be able to to produce quality television on a weekly basis comment down below let me know i would like your thoughts and opinions on that but i appreciate all the love and support road to 60k appreciate y'all kicking it with me i'll see y'all on the next one peace